Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm happy to present um, Prisma for your systematic review projects. I am Tanya Rivero. I'm an information specialist at the uh, Medical Library with the Research Support Services team. The aim for today's session will go over the Prisma statement along with its related content, offer some tips and considerations when you are using Prisma and its extensions. Um, I will also be highlighting some common pitfalls as well as showing some examples of good reporting that is aligned with the Prisma statement. Just so that we're on the same page on what is Prisma. Prisma, it stands for the Preferred Reporting Items for Systematic Reviews and Meta Analyses. And it's an evidence-based guideline to facilitate transparent reporting. And in 2020, it was updated uh, due to the new advancements in evidence synthesis and technologies. And Prisma uh, consists of a 27 item checklist along with the flow diagram. Now, because of its update, there were some significant changes from the previous statement, which was the 2009 Prisma statement. And there were some changes um, such as in the methods and results section, they added four newly created items, such as the certainty assessment, uh, certainty of evidence, and also competing interests. So authors have to declare if there's any competing interests, as well as um, declaring any availability of data or other materials in the review. And with this update, there's also a revised flow diagram, and there are actually four templates. And this would depend on if you are doing a review or an update of review and how extensive um, you will be searching in terms of resources. And it is important now because of the update that researchers use and cite the most current Prisma when they're reporting their systematic review. And just to give you an idea of what this looks like, here is the checklist that can help researchers track all of the items that they'll need to report within the manuscript. And here you see on the right-hand side is one of the um, revised diagrams. Of course, it depends on if you're doing a review or an update. And these are two things that you will use while you're reporting with Prisma. It's important to understand that with the Prisma statement, there are also extensions of Prisma that would support other types of projects. And all of the extensions will contain key documents and there are always new extensions that are being developed. And as a tip for you, I would say, do review the Prisma website to identify and of course incorporate any other appropriate extension for your project. Here is the website that's pretty easy to get to, um, prisma-statement.org. And this would be the first thing that you will see for the Prisma 2020 statement. And here you'll see all of the key documents such as the checklist flow diagram. And one important document um, that researchers should look over is the explanation and elaboration document. And this document goes into detail of all of the elements. And also they provide exemplars of how you should report those elements. So if you are not sure of any particular element in Prisma or need an example of how to do so, this document is something that you should fully review. And then to get to the extensions, you'll see here that on the banner, you will go ahead and click on extensions and you will see all of the various Prisma extensions. And some of these will be important for you to incorporate. And we have various for abstracts, for diagnostic tests, accuracy, equity, harms. And again, this will depend on the type of project you're doing, right? What the aims or objectives are. The two that I will be highlighting today Discussing with the Prisma 2020 statement is the Prisma extension for protocols, as well as the Prisma extension for searching. 
And so though there are extensions that um, are for particular projects, some of these extensions address particular aspects of the systematic review workflow. And so Prisma P, this is to guide researchers on how to report their protocol, essentially their plan from beginning to end of the project. And the Prisma S, this is guidance for the literature search, um, because of course you need to be transparent in your searching methods. And all of the extensions, they complement each other. And so the Prisma P along with the Prisma S work well with the 2020 statement. And so how do they work together? So as I said, the Prisma P, right, this kind of outlines the plan for the entire project, right? right what is your research question? Who is in your team? Um, what sources do you plan to search? Your inclusion, exclusion criteria? How are you going to deal with um, in terms of quality assessment, so on and so forth? And then the Prisma 2020, right, it is the guidance for reporting within the manuscript. And then the Prisma S for the searching part, right, it will give you guidance on reporting um, particular details for the literature search. And the way that they harmonize is that, for example, in the protocol, um, between the protocol and Prisma 2020, there are overlapping elements. And so therefore it will be easy for you to transition from the protocol into the Prisma 2020 statement. And then of course, with respect to the searches, provide all of the sufficient details necessary for your full search strategies or description of your searching methods. So the protocol is where you start and on the website for the Prisma P, you will see all of the key documents, including the checklist. And if you are new to this, if you're not exactly sure about protocols, there's also additional information where it goes over what um, you need to consider when you're developing a protocol, and then also information on where you register. There are various platforms and registries um, where you can submit your systematic review protocol. One that's very established is Prospero, and there's also information there as well. And so here is the Prisma P elaboration and explanation document. Again, if you are developing your protocol, do take a look at this. And here you see all of the important items that you'll need for your plan. And moving forward from the protocol into the Prisma 2020, as I mentioned, the um, elaboration explanation statement, it's really important that you review it to clarify any questions that you may have on, on, a, on any of the items that you have to report. And here you will see, for example, um, items six and seven. Um, these are discussions of the searches and they provide explanations along with the examples. And then you can then harmonize that with additional information that is provided in the Prisma searching extension. And moving to the Prisma S, um, here you see that it has, again, many examples, depending on what searching approaches you will use. For example, if you're doing a multi-database search, it provides an example of how you can report that, right? Again, the goal for Prisma is to be very transparent. If you're going to be including, for example, gray literature or searching online, it also gives you um, guidance for that as well. And the Prisma as checklist, there are 16 items, and this can be used on a wide range of disciplines. And though it was meant to harmonize with the Prisma 2020 for systematic reviews, you can also use this for other review types. And so now we want to go into some actual examples of how this would look like. We're gonna review just a couple of common pitfalls in publications when they're applying to Prisma. Along with that, see some examples of good reporting. And I do want to state that the examples that we have here, these are just snippets. And so in order to determine its overall reporting quality, of course, one needs to look at the entire publication. But these are examples are just to give you some ideas of what things you want to avoid and what things you want to strive for when you are applying the PRISMA statement. 
So here are some three examples, some things that we see quite frequently in the publications when they're referring to Prisma. On the first example here, you see that they refer that this study was performed according to Prisma. And this is not an accurate application of Prisma. Prisma will not tell you how to conduct your review. It will only tell you what to report and the level of detail that you need to report. And here on the second example, the researchers state that the study was conducted according to the key steps required for systematic reviews according to Prisma. And again, um, Prisma will not have key steps or instructions in conducting the review. And in the third example, they refer to Prisma as um, a research methodology. And this is not the case. Prisma, again, it's not a methodology. It's a reporting standard reporting guideline. And with that, you have to also consider that though Prisma will help you to be transparent and improve your reporting, you need to add some kind of guidance material to conduct your review appropriately. And so what you see here are various guidance resources that can help you to conduct your review. And for example, Campbell of Systematic Reviews, the Campbell Collaboration, they have guidance on conducting systematic reviews in the social sciences. If you're doing systematic reviews of interventions, the Cochrane Handbook provides guidance on this. In addition to having a chapter on diagnostic test accuracy reviews, if you are doing a review for qualitative evidence, the JBI has guidance. And so it's important to not just have Prisma for your reporting, but also have a guidance to conduct your review appropriately. And here's some examples of good reporting. So on the first example here, the author state that this systematic review was conducted according to the recommendations of Cochrane for systematic reviews of interventions and reported according to the preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analysis. And so this is a nice example of using Prisma accordingly, but of course, consulting with a guidance material to conduct their review. And in the second example, this team conducted a mixed method systematic review, which they state that it was informed by JBI that does have guidance on mixed methods and that their results were reported according to Prisma. And so these are great examples of how you would apply Prisma. And again, some other pitfalls that we do see on the first example, the researchers state that they conducted a systematic literature search according to the Prisma guideline. And again, Prisma will not tell you how to conduct the search, right? It will only tell you what to report regarding your searching methods and to make sure that you have the full search strategies available. And the second example here, right? They do provide some additional information. However, they refer to their searching strategy as the flow chart, right? So you see here that this is the Prisma flow chart, but this is not the searching strategy. A search strategy consists of the search terms, the syntax, um, all together. And so this is not an appropriate application for Prisma. And on the third example here, we see that they do list their information sources. However, they state that the full search strategies um, are available on, upon request. And this does not align with Prisma. Um, in the Prisma statement, your full search strategies should be available. And so here is an example of what you can strive for when reporting according to Prisma. Here in the paragraph, it goes into detail how the search was developed, listing all of the databases, including the platforms, when the search was completed, and they had an appendix where you can actually see the search strategy. And so this is what we mean when we talk about search strategy. And this is something that can be easily rerun on that appropriate platform. Here is another example where they go into detail of the search that it was developed by key articles selected by the team. And they also list not just their databases, but also their platforms. And when the, the 
coverage, right? So from inception to the last date search. And in that publication, they also had their search strategies accessible. So some takeaways regarding today's topic, do examine the Prisma e and &E publication, not just referring to the checklist and flow diagram, right? If you're going to invest the time in doing a systematic review, take the time to review um, to make sure that you have all of those elements reported. And of course, with the systematic review process, you want to start with the Prisma P extension, get your team assembled, and of course, have that registered and apply not just the 2020 statement, but any other extension that may be appropriate. And then of course, consult with a guidance material for conducting and performing your review. Prisma is not gonna tell you how to conduct your review, only what to report. And if you're starting a systematic review, here are some tips. I would say start searching in the Prospero registry to see if there is anything already published on your topic. If there isn't, then this gives you um, a good start to then start developing your protocol. Consult with an information specialist. We have a few in our team to discuss the protocol, finding guidance materials, selecting information sources, and developing the searches. And for those that perhaps attended um, the coffee lecture on SciFlow, on the SciFlow platform, there is a systematic review protocol template that's available that you can use to get started. So thank you so much um, for your time and attention. And now we can go into questions and discussions.